In video number four, we are going to learn how to thread our beading needle. Now that we have thread and we have needles and we have beads, we are going to learn how to thread the beading needle to get started. When I very first started, this was one of the biggest issues. First of all, I didn't know there were particular beetles, beetles? needles that I needed to use, and I did not know that there was particular thread in particular sizes that worked with particular needles. So I had a very difficult time. I didn't even, I could not get my needle threaded to start my projects. I finally figured it out, but it took a little time. So I have decided to spare you guys of this issue. So what we are going to do is, this is eight pound fire line, and this is a size 10 English beading needle, John James brand. brand. And um, what we're going to do is we are going to thread this eight pound fire line into the size 10 beading needle. Size 10 beading needle will also work with 10 pound, um, six pound, eight pound, 10 pound works really well. And it also works really well with eight and 10 pound nanofilm. I am using a smoke color so that you can see it. What you are going to do is you're going to cut off your length of thread and let's get really close. In order to get it through this little tiny eye of this needle, we are going to take a pair of flat nose pliers and we are going to squish the tip of the thread so that it flattens it out and we can get it through the needle better. We're going to place the thread between our forefinger and thumb like this so that just a tiny bit of thread is sticking out. I'm going to see if I can get even closer without blurring and so you can see that. Then we're going to line the hole up of the beading needle with that thread and we are just going to gently push it through the hole like so and pull it through. Now People may be saying, if you haven't experienced um, threading beading needles, you may be saying, why do I need to know how to thread an eye of a needle? I know how to do that. Believe me, when you start with these little tiny hole needles and the thread, it is not an easy thing to do. So having this technique is going to help you tremendously. I wish that I had known this when I started. So that is how you're going to thread your beading needle to start your projects. Next, we are going to go through how you are going to extend your fire line or add on a thread to a project. Okay, so let's address the hugest question I get, and that's, what do I do when I run out of thread in the middle of a project? Now, I have done this little piece of herringbone right here, and I'm going to um, pretend that I'm running out of thread. I have a ton on here, but I'm going to pretend that I'm getting really short on thread so that I can show you how to extend your fire line. You can do this quite easily with fire line and nanofill. I do not know that it works with any other type of thread. This is one of the reasons I recommend fire line and nanofill the most because this is the best way to add a thread to a project that I have ever found the easiest and the strongest. So anyway, I'm going to cut my thread here and I am now really short on thread and I need to add a piece of thread to my project. So what I'm going to do is get another piece of thread ready and I am going to do this close to the beads on my project so I don't have to draw the knot that I'm going to create through my beads many, many times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another piece of thread. I'm going to crisscross the thread. So my project thread is on top. My new piece of thread is on the bottom. I'm going to get a little closer if I can. And then I'm going to take my top thread and I'm going to put it underneath my bottom thread, my new thread there. And then I'm going to go to the top ends of the pieces I'm holding and I'm going to put the top thread over the bottom thread and then through the loop like so. So all I am doing is tying a square knot. 
Now I'm going to pull this knot down like so. And then what I like to do is trim the ends close so that when I pull my knot through to extend my fire line, I don't get a bunch of length way far away from my piece of work. So I like to trim them down like so. And then the next thing you're going to need is just a regular lighter. And you're going to take these two ends, you're going to light your lighter and go in the bottom of the flame and just get it close to the flame and just roll a little knot into the thread, so like a little wad, it just kind of wads up. The smaller, the better to pass through your beads again. Now, if you can see this, get really close, you can see I have two little balls on the end of my thread. Now I am just going to hold on to my piece and my working thread that I'm adding and I'm going to pull. This pulls those two little wads together and creates an incredibly strong joint in the fire line, which is a great way to extend. You want to make sure you keep those little wads at the end of your thread very small so that the resulting knot is very small and will pass through your beadwork quite easily. You will not have any issues with this breaking or or um, not holding. It will hold very well. I've used this method for years and it is just the best so way to do it. How and the beads just slid right down over that knot. Now I am going to go down into my work here and pull it through. I'm just doing a little herringbone stitch here and show you that it just goes right through like so and you can just continue sewing on your piece and um, not have any issues whatsoever. That is how you extend fire line. If you are not using fire line, then you will have to tie on a piece. So what we are going to do to tie on a piece, let's say my thread is getting really, really short. So what I need to do is I need to, I'm coming out of my end, I'm just going to sew through my um, beads here one more time to secure them. I'm going to find a place on the thread bridge and in a herringbone, this is a good place right here to tie a knot. and I'm going to tie a knot. And then I'm going to sew back through my beads a couple times. I'm gonna go down a couple. And then up through. If I can get coordinated, I will do this. Sorry guys. Up through this bead here. And then I'm just going to cut my thread and say, and leave a little tail like so. Now I need to tie back onto my piece so that I can continue sewing it. So I'm going to go down um, to a thread bridge. I'll turn it over, see if I can find a good thread bridge. I'm going to go right here. Now any type of piece you're working on, you just find a thread bridge. In herringbone, it's down the center. I'm gonna see if I can pick up my thread bridge here, right there. And I am going to bring it down to the end here. I am going to tie an overhand knot on that thread bridge and then bring it down between the beads. Then I am going to sew through my beads. So I'm going to go up through this one. Then I'm going to go down through this one right here. This is just to secure. Whatever stitch you're using, you'll just sew through some of the existing work you've already done and then sew back up through to where you need to continue your work and then you can continue your work. You can sew through the beads as much as possible. The fact that I'm doing a herringbone stitch doesn't give me a whole lot of space to, just a really narrow little herringbone, doesn't give me a lot of space to sew through my beads a whole lot. But as you can see, I have started my piece again. I just leave my tails there until I have a few rounds going and then I'll trim them down and I'll show you. So I've got, let's do another stitch here. I 
And then I'll trim this down and trim this one down. I won't trim them completely really short. I'll leave them a little bit of length and then with fire line, the great thing is, is I can just burn it down. If you're using a different kind of thread, you'll have to sew through a little bit more and cut them short so that you can't see them. But with fire line, you can do this and this works out great. And now I have another length of the thread on my piece and I can just continue sewing and continue making my piece. So that is how you extend your fire line and that is how you tie on thread to continue your project after you run out of thread. I hope this was helpful and next video we will move on to learning a new little project. Bye-bye.